Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. If you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too, or really helps the channel. And let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Becoming a Quartet from the True Off My Chest subreddit, titled, Am I the A-Hole for Making My Pregnant Wife Cry by Calling Her Less of a Person? And before we do get into this story, it does contain racism and emotional manipulation. So if you do want to skip the story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are down in the description and along the timeline below. Now let's get started. This all boils down to my wife's father. I have a six-year-old son that started living with me as his primary guardian when he was three and his mum went back to school. I met my wife through work and I also met her father, who worked at the same company in a higher role than both of us. My wife knew I had a son, but said I wouldn't introduce them unless we became a serious couple because that wouldn't be fair to him. When my wife did meet my son, they got along really well. I invited her and her father over for dinner one night and her father met my son for the first time. He was weird and awkward around my son and made strange comments about his appearance. His mom is black. I confronted him after the dinner and he made some pretty pathetic excuses. After that, I asked him to not contact me outside of work matters and asked her for space. A couple of weeks later, my wife told me she had completely cut her father off for his beliefs. Our relationship became stronger than ever. When we got engaged, she said she didn't want her father at the wedding. We ended up both transferring to other companies. As far as I knew, he was gone from both of our lives for good. My wife is pregnant and due in a month. She has already started maternity leave and has been looking for a new job to start after maternity leave because she doesn't want to stay at her current company. Yesterday, she sat me down and told me her dad got her an interview for a job at our old company. She also told me she had been talking to him for a couple of months and wants to know how I'd feel about him knowing our future child. I told her the truth. I told her I felt betrayed and I felt like she betrayed my son, who she claimed to think of as her son as well. I told her that she would even ask me that makes her less of a person in my eyes. She started crying and asked me what kind of insensitive jerk would call a woman pregnant with his kid less of a person. I told her that was how I felt and although the language was harsh, I felt it matched what she was asking for. After calling off, I'm unsure if my word choice was warranted and wondering if I was an asshole for speaking to her that way while she is pregnant and more emotionally vulnerable. I could have just said I wasn't okay with what she was proposing without insulting her character. And we're going to start in the comments with he who is right who says not the a-hole. As the saying goes, if there's a racist at the table with 10 other people, you have 11 racists. Your father-in-law has shown he's a racist. Even your wife knows that her dad is a racist as she had to cut him off. Your father-in-law has not made any demonstration of repentance. Yet, your wife wants to invite that toxic presence into your home where it can poison your eldest child. What did she expect you to do and say? You're right and your words were harsh, but harsh was appropriate. It takes a lesser person to want to invite toxicity into their home. And that's what your wife did. She is the one who needs to apologize for even the suggestion of her father coming back into your personal lives. That she's pregnant is not an excuse for the extreme breach of trust she committed. Edit, some people are claiming that you're just as bad as your father-in-law. That's incorrect. Your father-in-law is a racist. You're opposing racism and keeping it out of your personal space. There is no moral equivalence. Rame says, Everyone in these comments saying you're the a-hole have obviously never gone through a similar situation. You didn't call her less of a person. You said you saw her as less, meaning the view you had of her before. You see her as a lesser standard now. She betrayed your trust. She didn't communicate with you until she had already followed through. You're not the a-hole in my opinion. Own whereas says, everyone sucks here. I get you. I'd be mad too. I mean, what would happen down the line when a father is in the presence of both kids, but treats your son differently? I feel like your feelings of betrayal are valid at this moment, but I do think that it was an asshole move to call her less of a person. It's her father and I get wanting to have him back in her life. You both could have had a more constructive conversation about this, regarding expectations moving forward and her dad's behavior towards both kids. Frog says, I understand why Opie is so angry and betrayed. I absolutely do. But as someone who was no contact with my father while pregnant, that situation brings up a lot of intense feelings. I never personally got back in contact with my father, but I can understand why someone would, no matter what they'd done. 
like my dad hurt me personally for years and I still really considered it because hormones were playing with my head. I guess my point is that while OP's father-in-law is a racist and shouldn't be in that kid's life, that doesn't mean her actions have no explanation and that she should be treated that way. Pregnancy is a vulnerable time and can bring up past issues that we thought were closed. In my opinion, it should be everyone sucks here. Leisurely Live says, I'm going with not the a-hole. Were your words a little harsh? Mm, maybe. But if that's how you feel, why should you lie to her? Her being pregnant doesn't give her a pass to go behind your back, does it? No. Her dad is a blatant racist, unless he changed. Did she mention that at all, or is he still the same guy he always was, and now because she's pregnant, she's rethinking her no-contact relationship with him? It seems like she should have just talked to you about all of this before acting on it, because now you're left feeling hurt and betrayed, and I totally get that. Do you owe it to her to apologize for your hurtful words? I think so, absolutely, but you're right to not want racists in your life, even by extension. She's okay with racists in her life, apparently. Everyone has to make choices. Super Fast Mama says everyone sucks here. One weird dinner and you completely cut off her father. That's a lot. He's an asshole, I assume, for whatever he said. But cutting one's father out your entire life is monumentally hard. You seem to see this as very black and white. Your dad said this, so he's gone forever. And anything less than that means you don't love my son. Life doesn't work that way. You are the asshole for not putting yourself in the shoes of your wife and understanding this issue is complex. OP then says in another post, my 25 male wife, 26 female, and I need to have a difficult conversation. But she just gave birth. How long should I wait to bring it up? My wife and I just had a son. He's a little over a week old. We also have a son who isn't her biological child, who is six. About a month ago, I found out my wife resumed contact with her racist father, which was horrible to find out because my son is black. We talked about the issue a lot, and she agreed to never have our kids around her father, but she continued to speak with him. My wife has been resting since giving birth. I took two weeks off work so I could take care of the kids and home entirely while she rests. Yesterday, she came out of our room from a nap while I was cleaning the kitchen my son was on the couch holding the baby. She took a picture, which I get because it's cute, and then took the baby to feed and sat with my son and talked to him for a bit. I felt like things were going really well, but when my son went to his room to play for a bit, she came up to me to show me the picture. I thought it was very cute, but then she said she wanted to send it to her father. I was upset and I told her I wasn't okay with that. I asked her why she would even want to do that, knowing her father has such contempt for my son. She got upset and gave me the baby and went back to our room. I'm supposed to go back to work on Friday, but I already emailed my boss asking if I can come in next Monday instead. I need to talk to my wife about how to resolve the situation with her dad, but I don't want to upset her after just giving birth. Should I take more time off? Should I talk to her on Sunday? Should I talk to her before that? We need to have a difficult conversation, but the timing is important and I don't want to mess it up. And there was a lot of discussion below that particular post talking about boundaries, setting up boundaries, OP's wife breaking boundaries, etc, etc. OP comes in with her next post which says, I, 25 male, told my wife, 26 female, that I'm preparing to end our marriage because I feel like she chose a racist father over our family. There's more context in my earlier post, but essentially, my wife cut off her racist father while we were dating, in large part because of comments he made about my son who is black. My wife started to miss her dad while she was pregnant and now wants to find a way for him to have limited involvement in our lives. He really wants to know our newborn and she is willing to follow rules to have a relationship with him. I'm considering leaving her because of all of this. So yesterday we sat down to talk about everything. My wife and I are really good friends with another couple. Because we had such a bad experience with therapy, the wife from this couple, who is one of my wife's best friends, agreed to moderate our discussion. Her husband watched our kids. I laid it all out on the table. That I would never accept her father and would do everything possible to protect my kids from her father. That I would never allow him near my older son and would do everything possible to keep him away from the baby as well. My wife asked if I was planning on leaving her and I said I was preparing myself emotionally for that possibility. My wife said that no one else in her family wants anything to do with her except for her father. That they have all cut her off. She said she really wants our baby to know someone from her family. I asked if that was worth the cost that came with it and she said no, but that she wished I would try to understand. I said I wasn't capable of understanding wanting someone like that in our child's life. 
She said her father was from a different time and grew up hearing really nasty things about black people and it isn't his fault. I said I honestly didn't care and was sorry if that made me a bad person. I said I married you, not your dad. If I knew it was a package deal, I wouldn't have married you. Our friend interjected at that point and said we needed to focus on solutions and a plan forward. My wife said she would continue to talk to her father but not send him any pictures or information of slash about the kids. This is a fair compromise. The thing is though, I didn't believe her anymore. I feel like she's just saying what I want to hear. Am I delusional? Is there any chance of saving my marriage? OP's final post says, Yesterday, I ended my relationship with my wife and today I feel like a shell of a person. My wife and I have a six-week-old child together. I also have a son from before I met her. My son is not the same race as myself and my wife and her father has an issue with that. My wife cut her father out of her life when we were dating, but she reconnected with him while pregnant. Yesterday, I came home from work to find this man in my home holding our baby. I told him to get out. He tried to argue with me. I said by tomorrow, I wouldn't be living here anymore and he can come over whenever he likes. But while I am packing mine and my son's things, he needs to get out, away from me, out of my sight. My wife freaked out. She started panicking and hyperventilating. She told me I couldn't leave. I said I absolutely can and that I am done. I'm so embarrassed because I started crying when I said that. I love my wife so much and I don't want to leave her. I had tears and snot all over my face and my wife's dad started making fun of me. I yelled at him to get out. She started yelling at him too to get out. I found my son hiding in his room. He tried to come in and talk to me but I locked the door. My wife begged me to stay, but I ignored her. I could tell my son was scared. I packed up his essentials and took him to my car. My wife followed me carrying the baby. She told me I couldn't leave, but I said I had to get my son out of that environment. She said I had to take the baby then as proof I would come back. Baby was crying at this point, but I got him buckled into the carrier and drove off. I took my son to where his mum lives with her mother. My son's mum wasn't there, but her mum was. I said I had a family emergency she happily agreed to watch her grandson until his mum came home from class. I then took the baby back home. It only live an hour away, so I was only gone for two and a half hours. When I got home, my wife was in a state. I was scared for her. I went inside and I said I wasn't leaving the residence because I was worried about the baby, but our relationship is over. She lost it completely. I took the baby on a walk to the store and then came back. She'd calmed down somewhat from sheer exhaustion. She told me I couldn't leave her. I said I wasn't leaving physically yet, but it is over. I have never felt so empty before. I miss my wife, even though she's right in the other room. I miss my son, even though I FaceTimed him twice since dropping him off. I'm so angry at my wife. I'm worried this will impact my custody agreement with my son's mother. I'm sad that the person I thought was the love of my life isn't who I thought she was. I'm scared for our baby being exposed to all the stress and negativity. I feel like this is all my fault. Like I should have seen it coming. I should have found a way to prevent this. And that was Opie's last post. But what do you guys make of this situation? What would you have done if you was OP? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to another story. So I received a message today from Bloon Hater. He's <laughs> a commenter on YouTube and Twitter and Reddit as well. And they shared this post with us. It's a bit of a different one, but it did make me chuckle just at the title. It's from the Legal Advice subreddit, who says, I accidentally created an army of crow bodyguards. <laughs> Am I liable if my murder attempts murder? <laughs> what? <laughs> to make a long story short, I'm a late 20-something living in Portland, Oregon. Watch that. That'd be one of those pronunciations that catch me out. I had a pretty intense emo slash goth phase as a tween that I thought I had grown out of. A couple of months ago, I was watching a nature program on our local station about crows. The program mentioned that if you feed and befriend them, crows will bring you small gifts. My emo phase come back full force and I figured that I was furloughed and had lots of time. So why not make some crow friends? My plan worked a little too well and the resident five crows in my neighborhood have turned into an army 15 strong. <laughs> At first, my neighbors didn't mind and enjoyed it. They're mostly elderly and most were in a bird watching club anyway. They thought the fact that I had crows following me around whenever I go outside was funny. Lately, the crows have started defending me. 
My neighbor came over for a socially distanced chat, me on my porch, her in my yard, and the crows started dive bombing her. They would not stop until she left my yard. They didn't make physical contact with her, but they got very close. Am I liable if these crows injure someone since I fed them? I obviously can't control the crows. I'd rather them not attack my neighbors, but since I technically created this nuisance, could I be financially on the hook for any injuries? To be clear, they're not aggressive 100% of the time. If just the neighbors are out, they are friendly, normal crows. They only get aggressive when someone gets close to me or my property. ETA, TLDR, I have turned into Moira Rose, queen of the crows. My inadvertent crow army has gotten aggressive towards others. If they hurt someone, could I be held liable? ETA part two, I did not train these birds to attack. <laughs> and also, thank you for all your awards. I'm glad my stupid decisions bring you joy. Please consider donating that money to your local Audubon Society instead. Has anyone ever seen that Alfred Hitchcock's uh, The Birds? That horror, I think it was a horror film. All I can remember is birds attacking people. I can't remember why they were attacking or anything like that. I think in the film it was actually ravens and crows that they trained in that. And whilst I feel sorry for like someone getting dive bombed by a bunch of birds, the visual picture I put in my head, oh my word, it's got me to tears, I gotta tell you. And I'll reiterate again, I never want to see anyone get hurt by birds, but just the picture of OP just strolling at her house and saying morning to her neighbours and suddenly this neighbour gets absolutely bombarded by a bunch of birds. <laughs> which brings me to a post I found the other day on, I think it was on like Slow News Day, which is basically a subreddit dedicated to slow news articles around the UK. And there was this one from Yorkshire Live who, <laughs> get this headline, pure evil blackbird named Derek. <laughs> terrorizing Yorkshire village and attacking children. <laughs> Look at that face. <laughs> we got some right crazy birds. One of my favorites that I used to do when I was younger is go down. We used to go down to the river and like people hired boats from a bit further along. And there was always some like territorial swans that went up and down at certain times of the year. And they didn't like those boats. They would chase people up and down the river. I told you before, one of the swans got stuck in the bridge and that what that's what created Swan Man. We've got seagulls that are a pain in the ass down like at the beaches and things. And shopkeepers have to put signs out saying don't feed the seagulls because they literally dive bomb your chips and try and steal them from you. There was a video going around of someone had the whole sausage roll stolen out of their hand. <laughs> but I'm just going to read the top comment for that before we go to the actual update because I found it really interesting. Hi Doll says, they are resource guarding to stop them from attacking people. Ask guests to bring shiny objects or food scraps for the murder of crows as an offering. You can also supply your guests little baggies of treats for them to offer up. If they dive bomb someone, don't give them food for 24 hours. If they are nice to a guest, give them a high value treat to reinforce positive behavior. Advice from my partner. She was a field biologist that is published in biology slash orthonology. That is mad, isn't it? Offerings to the crows. I I can just picture all the neighbors walking up to OP's apartment slowly sort of like cowering down in fear, their hands in the air cupped in a bowl with little gold coins and earrings. The shiny things, my crows. <laughs> so OP did update the post and they said, to make a long story short, I called the Audubon Society. They didn't think feeding the crows was bad and suggested that the neighbors also start feeding them. So they essentially became better socialized. The plan worked and the crows are now a beloved part of the community. There have been no recent dive bombings. Most amazingly, the crows have legitimately saved my neighbor. I said he had a pretty big ice and snow event recently. Like I said in my last post, most of my neighbors are older. One of my neighbors was walking down a steep driveway, slipped and couldn't get back up. The crows started going ballistic and they were making more noise than we have ever heard. A different neighbor went outside to see what was up and found the gentleman in his driveway. Neighbor is mostly okay, just some serious bruises. Needless to say, the crows have been getting some high value food since then. Thanks for all the help on my original post. It blew up way more than I was expecting and thought you guys would enjoy an update. Holy damn. I wasn't expecting the crows to just become a part of like, like society around the area. People just wandering up and down. See the crows sitting up on the building over there. Morning, Derek. Derek's like, Wah. <laughs> oh, I found that way funnier than it should have been. 
Thank you so much, Bloon, for sharing that story. That was absolutely made my morning. But now what do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today, getting involved in the stories, your love, support and time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Take care and much love.